Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, this video is going to be featuring two new builds uh, or restorations, and they're both 1980 CBXs. And I'm going to be starting on both these bikes uh, as soon as the 279s that I'm finishing up right now are finished, which will probably be in the next month or so. But uh, this video is going to be the uh, introduction and teardown of these two 1980 CBXs. One of them is a Marysville, Ohio bike, and the other is a uh, Japanese, uh, you know, Japan bike. And uh, the Marysville bikes are slightly different than the uh, than the Japanese uh, bikes. First of all, the Marysville bike has uh, their VIN numbers are a little bit different. Uh, the, the engine number um, is off about 1,700 uh, numbers off of the, uh, the actual VIN on the bike. So that, that's one unique thing about the Marysville bike. And this, this right here is the Marysville bike. So as you can see there, the engine numbers are off about 1700 or so and also the marysville bike has a uh, number one on the fifth position from the end on their vin so uh that that's one thing that's different uh on the marysville bikes so anyway this uh <clears throat> this is the first bike here and then the second bike you can see there in the background right right there um which i'll be uh you know featuring the first bike that's being torn down here. So this is the second bike here. And this bike is very rough. Uh, and there's a lot of funky things about it. Like it's got chrome handlebars on it. And it's got a 900F front end on it. And, you know, there's just a lot of stuff on this bike that are that are not correct. But but uh, the the engine and the frame and and the wheels and the whole rest of the bike has basically been untouched. It's got the original um, carburetors, air box, uh, you know, all the electrical uh, components have not been touched or anything like that. So um, anyway, uh, this uh, this whole video will be done in pretty much time-lapse fashion, but at least you'll be able to see kind of what I'm doing there, and you, it, it'll be a kind of interesting to watch the bike kind of disappear in front of your eyes there, so um, I'll, I'll kind of make comments along the way. So the first thing that I do is try to get the uh, the wire harness and all the cables and... and um, spark plug wires and all that stuff off the bike before I start, you know, removing the engine and the frame and the wheels and all that because the wire harness and all the cables and everything can get in your way. But, uh, you know, I, I start off taking off, obviously, all the bodywork and then the headlight and the instruments and, and uh, all of which were not correct on this bike anyway, but, um, but in this scene here, I'm I'm getting all the wire harness and everything all uh, taken off, and and all the electrical, the wire harness and everything come together at the battery box. It's sort of ground zero for all the electrical uh, connection connections and and all of that. All the systems kind of come together right there at the battery box. And in order to get the battery box out, you have to take the rear fender and inner fender off first, as I'm doing here. And uh, makes it much easier to get that battery box out of there. And then the other thing about this bike is that it, because it's so rough, crusty, and, and rusty, uh, all of the nuts and bolts and everything are just frozen solid on there. So it, it took me probably twice as long to get this bike apart as it did the other one, which is in fairly decent condition, as you'll see. And then this scene here, I'm, I'm taking the carbs off. And what I use, I use a very long tire iron with a pipe connected to the back of it. So it's about five feet long. And I literally pry the carburetors out. And, and you have to, you know, 
be careful that you only put the pry bar in in strong areas of the carburetors like big aluminum blocked areas and uh, you just have to put a lot of WD-40 and pry them off so and and I always do it before I remove the engine from the bike because then you've got a lot more leverage that way so and here I'm removing the aftermarket six into one exhaust, which again was so frozen solid. It took me a good hour to get the uh, exhaust off of here, but it finally came. And then you can see water coming out of the back of the pipe there from all the years sitting outside. And as I said, the, the, uh, the front end, I guess the fork, well, the, the, the whole front end is off a 900F, so luckily I have another CBX front end that I'll be able to put on here. Actually, I believe the forks are these CBX forks, but the fork bodies and the whole, the rest of the front end and everything are off a 900F, so... Anyway, at this point, it's it's good to have a motorcycle lift, as you can see there, because uh, then when I go to lift the frame off the engine, as you'll see, uh, it's a lot easier to get maneuver the engine around, and then at that point you can put it wherever you need to. And I'll be doing a rebuild on this engine as well, like I did the others in previous videos. And then this back wheel was just extremely hard to get out, get off. It, again, I spent an hour trying to get the the all everything unfrozen and the chain broken and and all of that. So, uh, you know, the worst condition these bikes are in, the harder it is to take them apart. So. I mean, everything's frozen. The axles and everything are just frozen solid. You have to use a whole lot of WD-40 when you're taking these things apart. Then at that point, <clears throat> you take the last motor mount off the top there, and then the frame just comes right off the engine. I had forgotten to disconnect the oil lines off the oil cooler before I took the frame off. So at this point, I'm slowed the video down because I want to explain the, the rear um, swing arm on an 80 is much different than a 79. It's got a threaded uh, uh, sort of ac um, collar their collar setup and the bearings they've got ball bearings on one side and needle bearings on the other this is one of the spacers or the collars that go on one side then then you have an oil seal here and you get that out of there and then on this side is the uh there's the oil seal and then on this side is the side with the needle bearings and as I say, the, uh, the, the chain side has needle bearings in it. That's the collar that goes in the needle bearing. Then there's the needle bearing right there. And then on the uh, brake side, it's got a double layer or a stacked ball bearing set up. And I'll show you that here. But first, there's a collar here. And I don't have the correct tool to get that out, but you can just tap it with a... Uh, with a with a punch you just kind of lightly tap tap it on there it's not it's not torqued very hard so then you just unscrew that and then and then there is like i said a double layer of ball bearings there stacked on one another and what you have to do you have to drive them through and i've got an old uh, socket extension here and it's the perfect size you just kind of Put it in the opposite side and knock the two ball bearings out sealed ball bearings you can see them there and there's two of these stacked on top of one another 
and then you turn it back over and knock out the uh, the needle bearings on the other side. And here are the needle bearings on the chain side of the swing arm. And those can be reused. They're in, they're in really good shape. So, and then here's the uh, the Marysville Ohio bike, and it's in pretty good condition. Um, I got the bike, and it, there were a lot of parts missing off of it, but um, so it was already kind of torn down a little bit, all the bodywork and everything, but I do have bodywork that I'm having painted right now to put on there, and so I'm just kind of jumping through here to get to get all of this bike apart. As you can see there, that's all apart. So now both bikes are completely disassembled, and now I'm, uh, I've got all of the frame, including the, uh, the 1100 F frame. I'm taking all three frames now over to the powder coaters. And uh, so all the black parts, the swing arm, battery box, all three frames, and so on. And I'm heading over to the powder coaters. And this next scene at the powder coaters, I'm going to have some real audio going. So it's going to be loud here for a minute. I just wanted to kind of give you a feeling of the of the place. So, right. So there are the three frames and all the black parts. And now I'm walking through. He's he's taking me on a tour to the to the uh, facility, and it's a really huge facility because right there in front of me is the oven which I'll show you here in a minute, but all of these big, big parts and pieces that they powder coat at this place. I mean, it must be a 20 or 30,000 square foot facility. So here's one of the guys spraying the powder on a gate. And then as soon as he gets that all sprayed, he'll put it into the oven. He'll roll this rack into the oven, which is right here. And again, I'm gonna let the guy here talk about the oven. So then, you know, once they sandblast everything, they get it down to the bare metal. And then that's when they uh, take it over to the guy that sprays. They, they uh, electrically charge it, and then the powder sticks to it, and then they stick it into the oven that you just saw. So here's the area where they do all the sandblasting. And there's the sandblast gun. And then when they first bring it, when you first bring the parts in, the first thing they do is they run it through this thing here, which is uh, it washes it down with solvent and hot water and so on. It gets all the grease and grime and dirt and all that off of there. Then they take it and sandblast it. And then once it's sandblasted, they take it over to the, uh, to the guy to shoot the powder. So now here's a, uh, an artist sculpture that just came out of the oven. And as you can see there, it's all powder coated in white. And as you probably already know, you know, there are many, many different colors. So there's the back end of the oven right there. And then when they're all finished, they, they lay them aside here for people to pick them up. There's a whole frame of a car there. There's a boat trailer. Uh, looks like a railing, a lot of chairs. I mean, anything 
can be powder coated pretty much. Anything that can withstand the 450 degrees. 380, he said. So that's that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to kind of show you the uh, the disassemble process and then the powder coating process. And I'll take another video of these frames when I get them back in about a week or so. And then uh, as I close the video down, I want to show you the outside of the powder coating facility. And then uh, thank you so much for watching. And as usual, please like, subscribe, and share. Really helps support the channel. And then the next video, I'll be continuing on on the 279 uh, CBXs. So again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.